Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Academy and to the second half of this evening's amazing concert. It is a great pleasure for me to be invited to celebrate one of tonight's artists honoured by the London Cello Society today with a Lifetime Achievement Award. We need only to read the programme biography of Ralph Kirschbaum to see that he already has several lifetimes worth of achievements well and truly in the bag. The facts, however, are extraordinary and extensive, cannot fully express the positive influence, energised creative vision and supremely benign generosity of spirit that Ralph brings, not only to our cello world, but to the entire artistic community and beyond. To the busy life of an international solo performer, add his enduring and legendary relationship with George Pauk and Peter Frankel. This piano trio was one of the most significant musical collaborations of the late 20th century, lasting three decades and encompassing an utter seriousness and devotion to the concept of chamber music. According to George, Ralph is the most meticulous and profound musician, having such sophisticated attention to precise detail. But apparently this extended also into his particularity regarding hotel accommodation while they were on tour, <laughs> leading him on one occasion to change his hotel room eight times, although actually Ralph disputes this figure. The world's concert halls, orchestras, chamber ensembles and conservatoire faculties are populated with Ralph's former students. I consider myself as hugely lucky to count myself amongst their number because he was a genuinely life-changing teacher for me and I know that my fellow colleagues and dear friends who also studied with him share that view. As well as his guidance as a teacher and mentor of eye-opening revelation, his practical gift for the motivation and support of young cellists generated his creation of the Pierre Fournier Award in 1988, which kick-started the careers of a phalanx of talented players. To his amazing record as a performer and a pedagogue, please bring to mind the incredible success of the RNCM Manchester International Cello Festivals, which he founded also in 1988, and which were recognised with a Royal Philharmonic Society Music Award. In 2012, he inaugurated the Piatigorsky International Cello Festival in Los Angeles, attended by the world's foremost cellists and rising young artists, and repeating this wildly successful enterprise in 2016. Ralph's cello festivals represent a microcosm of Ralph's global musical reach and influence, where playing and teaching colleagues, audiences, students, academics and humanity in general are warmly drawn in to share his artistic experience, enthusiasm, inspiration and generosity of ideas. These traits characterise his extraordinarily life, extraordinarily life in music. So I'm honoured to have the opportunity to present Ralph Kirschbaum with the London Cello Society's Lifetime Achievement Award after a decade and a half as our honorary president. But I am requesting a special rider to the effects that I would like to add the words, so far, in the hope that he may continue to be our inspiration and much-loved friend for many, many <coughs> decades to come. Ralph. Of course, it is a great honor, I have to say, to receive such an award. On the other hand, when I was talking to my friends back in America, I said, you know, they're giving me this award and you know you're getting old when they start to give you a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> but there is, there is uh, hope yet. In the Jewish religion, when you turn 70, and I have to admit, two years ago I did so. You begin counting again. So here I am in front of you as a two-year-old. <laughs> but I certainly look forward to, to many more years of what has been a, an incredible life's journey for me. One that might not have happened if my high school counselor had had her way. 
all of us as seniors had to go and have a meeting with the counselor. And so the counselor said to me, so where have you applied to go to university? And I said, well, I've applied to go to Yale and to Harvard. She said, where else? I said, no, just Yale and Harvard. She said, do you know how hard it is to get into Yale and Harvard? I said, yes, I do. I have family members who went to Yale, but that's where I would like to go. Well, what are you going to do if you don't get in? I said, well, goodness, I don't know. Um, I, I could go to a, a school here in Texas. I grew up in a small town in Texas. And then she said, well, if you get into Yale and Harvard, what are you going to major in? And I said to her, and by this time, I mean, I was 18 years old. I fortunately had won some competitions uh, within the United States and had opp opportunities to play with orchestra and so forth. But she said, if you get into Yale and Harvard, what do you major in? And I looked at her and I said, you know, I haven't decided, but in all likelihood, it will be music. And I'll never forget the look on her face. <laughs> she looked at me and she said, but Ralph, you're smart. <laughs> Well, what can I say? <laughs> Here we are. Uh, actually, there's another wonderful story. I mean, you know, so many of the artists playing tonight, I'm really honored to be performing with them. They're dear friends of mine. Uh, and one of them, Raphael Walfish, tells the most marvelous story. He was touring probably 20 or 25 years ago in New Zealand. And somebody came up to him after the concert and said, I just loved your performance tonight. Thank you so much for coming and playing for us. Uh, and where is Antoinette? <laughs> Antoinette is my wife. <laughs> and Raphael, without dropping a beat, looked at this person and said, well, I hope she's home with Ralph. So when we get together as cellists, and, and as you know, that's something that is very dear to my heart. It's, I, I care so much about the younger generations and what they're interested in, what they're looking for, and what they're listening for. I, I think of a, of a statement of Piatigorsky. I'm also honored to hold the Piatigorsky chair at the University of Southern California, and he said when he was near the end of his life, sadly, he said, it took me my whole life to learn how much I don't know. And for those younger people here in the hall tonight, let that be a mantra that learning, growing, developing, never ceases. And that's been perhaps my, my greatest joy I want to thank you. I want to thank the London Cello Society, with whom I've worked very closely for a number of years, Selma and Justin, helping her as well, have, have formed a formidable team. And I must say, I'm so impressed with what they have achieved over the last few years. It's wonderful to be with you, with you here today. Thank you so much for this award. It means a great deal. Thank you. Thank you.